Uh, in today's video, I'm going to talk about one of my favourite subjects, Games Workshop's release schedule. A weird thing happened today. So for those of you that don't follow this precisely as I do, 6pm UK time every Sunday we get the Sunday preview article. And this video is always worked on and put up after that Sunday preview article, just in case uh, the Sunday preview is anything interesting. Now, this week I wasn't expecting anything really good. I was expecting them to bring out that um, Warcry box that we knew was coming out, or maybe uh, Dwarves for the Old World. Instead, we got literally nothing. They tried to make it look like we got something by telling us about the balanced data slate that we knew was coming next week for 40k. And by telling us about some licensed products that, of course, they as a company really have nothing to do with beyond saying, yeah, you can go and make that and sell it on your own website. Now, this is apparently the calm before the storm of the new edition of Age of Sigmar, and fair play to them. You know, they are making a new edition of their second biggest game, right? And we know that that's going up for pre-order on the 29th of June, and we know it's going to be in stores on the 13th of July. I mean, you, you know now, because I've let you know. I mean, they, they posted this image on their social media channels, like Facebook and Instagram. I don't think they actually made a big, unless I missed it, they don't think they made a big walk-on post uh, with these dates on. But, you know, it it is logical that they would need a, uh, you know, some time to spin up for that, presumably. All their warehousing space is now full with copies of Skaven Tide ready to go. Now, just how popular Skaven Tide is going to be remains to be seen. Of course, Age of Sigmar 3, they did not sell those at all. I'm sure you can probably find copies of Age of Sigmar 3 in local gaming stores now, if you look hard enough. Um, so, be interested to see how they go. So, why why is this a video? Did I just fancy some low effort? No, if I wanted low effort content, I would have made the video I planned to make about the new Kill Team Desert Rules in White Dwarf, which are not that exciting. Um... But no, this video is, is topical, because what they've done is they've left some things behind. Now, you may not track the Games Workshop releases on a spreadsheet like I do, uh, but I just like to track these things. So, since last Warhammer Fest, when we got all of the roadmaps, I have created this spreadsheet, which you can see on the left-hand side, top left-hand side of the screen here. And uh, I've cut down all the things that have completed. So... These are the things we have dates for because they have roadmaps that they've produced. Um, and you can see that we are missing Warcry, Briar and Bone, which was supposed to be out um, by the end of May, right? And you can see that here on the original warband, uh, on the original roadmap. It says two new warbands to be confirmed in the spring. Now, it doesn't say Briar and Bone, Phil, but we know that this to be confirmed. We found out that it was Briar and Bone at the Adepticon preview, right? We also know that we miss a Plastic Mellow weapon set. Now, this hasn't even been previewed, but it was promised for us. Plastic Mellow weapon set to come out in the spring. Everything else on the Heresy roadmap we've seen. Now, once those two things there are fulfilled, we've, all, we've reached the end of all the roadmaps, with the exception of 40k, that got a tiny little extension to its roadmap, letting us know uh, in the summer to ex expect Genius Steel Occult Sisters of Battle and the redacted codex which is widely rumored to be agents of the imperium but of course we don't know what it is for sure um nothing else had their roadmap extended past the end of may right but we also know old world dwarves um was previewed again back in adepticon times so it also feels because like, all this other stuff the 30k uh mechanicum the necromunda hive secundus and the Legion's Imperialist Devastation of Talan. This was all previewed comparatively recently at the the not Warhammer, like the not Age of Sigma, like Warhammer preview they did alongside the um, Age of Sigma preview, right? So these three things we know might be coming at some point quite distant in the future. But re Old World Dwarves have been waiting for that for a long time. So the, the melee weapon set, Briar and Bone, the Old World Dwarves are all things that I would have expected to come out before Age of Sigmar 4th Edition. And certainly we can say that Briar and Bone is late, right? They've missed this 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 end of May. Now, some people are going to come to me and say, well, um, you know, technically Druidic Spring hasn't quite finished yet. It's not quite summer yet because of solstices. But the thing is, just before you type that comment, 
I very much doubt it's going to come out inside the pre-order window for um, Age of Sigmar, Skaven, Skaven Tide anyway. So now that we know we're not getting anything previewed in this Sunday preview, I don't expect anything now um, because we know that next Sunday preview is going to be this. I don't imagine anything's going to go up alongside Skaven Tide, right? And I don't, I'm not convinced anything's going to go up within the two-week pre-order window for Skaven Tide. I think the next time we will see a new thing going up for pre-order will be on the 13th of July. And I, I could be right on that. They might do something like a little made-to-order or uh, something else like that, but I don't think it's good. I don't think those things are going to make it out. So we're going to get to the middle of July. Um, you know, with, with, and if you're hyped for, um, you know, if you're hyped for Age of Sigma, because it, it's not going to be Skaven Tide, it's going to be Skaven Tide and all the index cards. And then we're going to have the, uh, a week or so later, we're going to have the full release for Age of Sigma, you know, the separate rule book and all the different bits and pieces. And you might be really, I'm reasonably hyped for Age of Sigma. I just think it's interesting that some of this other stuff seems to have fallen through the gaps. Um, and we've had these videos on this channel before, and we've had them more frequently. You know, if it if it was termination that we were still waiting for, rather than Briar and Bone, the video would take a different tone. The fact is, I don't play Warcry, and I don't know anyone that does uh, in my kind of personal circles. Right? I'm sure, I know it is played. I've seen some YouTube channels on it. I'm curious about it, uh, but I don't know anybody. I haven't seen many videos of people going. Where Briar and Bone? I'm chomping a little bit for Briar and Bone. Where Briar and Bone? I've seen some people saying where dwarves, right? Because the old world people are really excited for their stuff, and a lot of people really want those things. Because right now, all those old Warhammer stuff really expensive on eBay, and people want the the re-releases. So they can get them for a reasonable price, and that all makes sense. But it's just difficult to understand. Um, yeah, why some of this stuff is so late. Now it's interesting because it begs the question. I'll talk a bit more about this at the end. Um, should Games Workshop do roadmaps going forwards? Because, obviously, they can't seem to eat... <laughs> okay, there's two things. If they didn't do the roadmap, we wouldn't know um, that Briar and Bone was certainly late, and we would never have known about the plastic melee weapons that they were ever promised. They would never have been mentioned. I think we would still be having this video because we would have been sitting here going, well, we've had a preview event, but not everything from the previous previews come out, and that's weird. Because that even by itself, that it is still strange. It has happened before with Kill Team. It is still strange when they preview something, then they get round to the next preview event, and not everything from the previous preview event has been released, or at least like previewed properly, like Sunday previewed, right? So it's gonna release in three weeks. Um, yeah, odd one, odd one. Speaking of preview shows. So we had Adepticon uh, 2024 on the 21st of March, right? Which is what these two are, are still outstanding from, right? The Dwarves and the Warcry. And then we had the Not Age of Sigmar preview show on the 18th of May. And that's where we learned about the Old World Dwarves, the 30k Mechanicum, the Necromunda Hive Secundus, and the Legion Imperialis Devastation Clan. And of course, the box reveal for um, Age of Sigmar 4th edition, right? Uh, we're getting an upcoming preview on Gen Con on the 2nd of August and an upcoming preview at Nova Open on the 28th of August. So, for those of you that don't know, you, Games Workshop hasn't announced either of these previews, but you can find out about them. Basically, you you, you th think of a uh, a, a independent event which is possibly going to have a Games Workshop preview, and if you go to their website, you then can find out in their, like, where you can buy tickets for the preview as an attendee of that event, and you can find the event listing. So this is the one for Gen Con, the Warhammer preview, and this is the one for Nova Open, which they've called the Games Workshop Reveal. So we know there's reveals coming on those two dates. Um, I don't think they're going to release anything big now until uh, the 13th of July, potentially. So no no previews in July, which just puts us in an interesting place where are we... Are they ever going to reveal this 40k? Coda, are we going to get another roadmap for 40k telling us? Like, it's weird to me that we haven't ever, like, I mentioned this on a live stream recently, I don't think we've ever been in this position with 40k where we haven't known what the next codex is going to be, right, other than an unrevealed one, right? Uh, but, like, usually with 40k, we know what the next two or three codexes are going to be, right, because they tell us that with a roadmap. So, that's also interesting, you know. 
And it just all paints a picture of Games Workshop having a slight problem making reliable promises about when stuff's going to be out. Things seem a little bit like they need to be flexible. Um, things that they've promised are coming, and they are coming, and they're coming out late. And it, it's not a massive issue, right? And I don't want to come off as too like angry and grumpy and whatever, but it is an interesting one. Now, they are trying to fix this problem, if, if indeed it is a problem. So this was an interesting little article that came up in the local Nottingham newspaper, so the Nottingham Post, right? And this reads, Warhammer firm Games Workshop to build new Nottingham factory as part of huge expansion plan. The company behind the global phenomenon Warhammer figurines has unveiled plans to build a new manufacturing facility to continue its impressive growth. Wargaming giant Games Workshop wants to build a new Nottingham factory as it plots years of expansion to keep up with booming customer demand. The company behind the phenomenon Warhammer Miniatures has unveiled plans to build a new manufacturing facility to continue its impressive growth. The globally dominant tabletop games firm, which made £94.5 million uh, pound profit in the six months up to November 2023, said it will be continuing to grow its complex on Willow Road, Lenton over the next several years. More than 350 staff currently work around the clock. Around the clock, according to... Not, which I think is interesting, right? 350 staff work around the clock at the site's three existing factories to produce millions of the popular figures, but even now is not, not enough to meet demand according to the company. Games Workshop plans to open a fourth factory on land at the rear of its headquarters in spring 2026 before relocating its packing operations to the new facility. Moving these operations out of factories along Willow Road would then create space to expand its tooling and injection moulding operations, enabling production to ramp up. So... What's interesting here is a couple of things. Um, so for those of you who don't know, in the UK, when you want to build stuff like this, you have to submit for planning applications, and they go to like the local council, like in this case, be Nottingham City Council, I imagine, right? And then once they've been discussed by the council, they're in the public record, which is where all this information is going to have come from. So it sounds like they want to build a, f a facility by 2026 but that won't actually make any miniatures like reading between the lines that's going to be a place where they pack the products up and then they're going to by moving their packing stuff out around then they're going to use those facilities that were previously being used for packing uh they're going to be used for injection molding machines now there was some sort of scuttlebutt about the problem being power generation that they were using too many kilowatts of power so maybe that's why they're having to put the packing move move, move the the packing I mean, presumably packing takes less electricity than actually producing plastic figures right so they're moving the packing stuff to a different location that's close to the headquarters and then they can put more um plastic injection like actual warhammer factories down down willow road so they're, they're really trying to ramp up production which is you know on the one hand like as somebody who is british it's really positive to hear about like a company in England which is doing well and employing people and generating like capital in an area like Nottingham is not a particularly um, like there are some lovely people and I've played some lovely games in, of, of Warhammer in Nottingham with different people but it's not the most like wealthy area of the country so like on the one hand it's really good to feel like because you usually hear about all the you know typically in the UK everything we buy comes from America and we just have like banking seems to be the only thing that happens in this country and it's very kind of disappointing so it's quite nice to read about like a british company that's actually doing really really well and exporting things to the world and employing loads of my countrymen in a part of the country that could do with some more gainful employment and all this stuff and that's 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 positive on the other hand it's like oh they put the prices up again um and now they can use that money and they've got record profits of 94 and a half million so why do they have to put the prices up and then put out this thing saying we're struggling with COVID and inflation and everything else? And they're clearly not right. They clearly could absorb the inflationary costs if they if they if they felt they 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 they, they wanted to. Um, but it's a very well run business, right? It is a very well run business. Um, always has been, I think, like as a business, and it's not always it's not always pleased the fans, but. 
they're very good at getting away with what they can get away with whilst people still buy stuff like and that's the way to run a company like that like if you do everything your fans want and give them the best like value boxes and you keep the prices low and you do all these things it'll get you a load of goodwill but it doesn't unless it gets you more customers it's not worth doing so what you want to do is is charge the most you can without losing too many customers like it's it's a very difficult game and actually weirdly um if they can produce more stuff that might actually in the long run mean that prices stay a bit lower because kind of talking out my ass here but bear with me if you have when you stupid numbers if you have the capacity to make 10 things right and there are 50 people that 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 want to buy them then you only have to work out how much they can charge for them so the richest 10 of the 50 people that want your thing can afford it right because you don't need to make it affordable for the whole 50 because you can only make 10 anyway uh when you can make many many when if you can make 50 it becomes more like likely from a good business point of view that you want to put the price a bit lower so that everybody that wants one can buy one because you probably make more money overall like it, so maybe but ha- fixing their supply problems will actually in a roundabout way lead to lower prices in the very long run or not look they'll never like lower prices but they and we won't notice that they've lowered prices but like they might raise prices less so that over time you know it's potentially possible um now over the next five or more years there'll be significant investments in machinery and infrastructure as well as the creation of new manufacturing jobs according to planning documents submitted by the business at this point in time the number of jobs and their phasing cannot be quantified they told nottingham city council a vacant building will have to be demolished for the new factory to take place, which Games Workshop's planning agent said would happen as soon as possible in 2024. The factories are joint offices would have an employee changing facilities, a canteen, and a tr- so they're building a pretty bit. Like if you've been to Warhammer World, right, you've, and you've been to an event, you've eaten in the staff canteen. They're building essentially a whole, not a second Warhammer World because they're not going to do the customer facing part again, but they're building a whole second set of structures that's going to have a whole second like canteen. Uh, employee change facilities, training room, like they're not building a small thing, right? Um, East Midlands Chamber, which supports and champions the region's business, warmly welcomed the prospect investment. is one of Nottinghamshire's largest companies. Yeah, one of Nottinghamshire's largest companies. I'd love to know what the larger, given how big Games Workshop is, like I'd love to know what else is in Nottinghamshire that's bigger. Uh, but there you go. Uh, if expansion of manufacturing facilities and the additional space gained results in growth of productivity, then it's a positive. I mean, that's like if you if if they get if they grow, then it's a good thing. Like, of course, why have we come to you for an expert comment? Uh, if the investment game workshop was talked about over the next few decades, does mean new jobs, as they've said, that's something I welcome too. The planning application is pending consideration by Nottingham City Council. Games workshop has been approached by Nottinghamshire Live for comment. I imagine that the planning thing will go through because all they're talking about doing is demolishing a building in what is otherwise a pretty dilapidated and rundown like industrial estate. They're not, as far as I can tell, encroaching on anything. The reason you have to go for planning permission is so that you can't just turn a park. Take a stupid example: you can't just turn a park into a landfill, right? Because the people would go, "Hang on, we like having a park here." But Games Workshop's just talking about tearing something down and putting something in a place which is already kind of brownfield, industrially stuff. So, I can't see it being a massive problem. I thought that was interesting. And it's one of those videos where I've just kind of stuck two or three things together and hope it's made a cohesive video. But if you're still here, then thanks. Yeah, you obviously agree. Um, so, leaving aside all the stuff about the new factory, which is interesting. Um, slightly irrelevant, right? What about roadmaps? Should Games Workshop produce roadmaps? And I'm I really of two minds on this one because, on the one hand, like it is frustrating when they produce a roadmap and then they can't stick to it. And so, if they can't stick to it, would it be better to not have a roadmap and then you only have positive press because it's only look at this new thing they've announced, look at this new thing they announced, right? I think to a degree they need to do roadmaps because cast your mind back to um, when Kill Team first launched like with the octarius box they definitely needed to produce something that said this is a product that we're going to support like and and this is the vague free like they, they definitely say we are going to produce a big box like this every quarter i think that's really important for them to do 
because Games Workshop has a track record of making games like Shadow War Armageddon, right, or Man of War, or Space Hulk, where people buy into them, and then that's it. It was it's a one and done. And so when they're releasing a game, um, you know, it, it is really important for them to clarify, I think, what kind of support that game is going to get over the three years of its life cycle so that we can discern um you know if they if, if they came out with let's say they came out with a, a box that was like a revamp more time right everybody would like it right or a new battlefleet gothic or, you know any of these things they could do people do deserve to know well look is this going to be a one and done is this going to be a we'll release it and then we'll release like bits and pieces now and again like kind of like blood bowl or can you can you talk to us over the three-year lifespan of the game what's the cadence of release going to be like that is useful information weirdly i think it's less important than to produce roadmaps for 40k and age of sigma because it's kind of assumed isn't it that those are going to be supported um yeah I, so i don't think they should i just think they should say look we're gonna we, we are going to continue to release a box each quarter for for kill team and that's all really i need to know you know uh, don't use seasons because nobody knows what they mean. Use fiscal quarters. But let me know. What do you think about roadmaps? Um, no preview. I've, I've been watching a lot of streams, Chapmaster Valorak, and, and looking around other places. If you don't care, as he doesn't, right? If you don't care about Age of Sigma, it feels very weird that they're not going to have another preview until the 1st, 2nd of August, right? You know, because... 40k like until this point 40k has been getting releases really really rapidly um and you know they could just drop a warcom article saying like oh yeah imperial agents here's what they've got here's all the things uh, it's going up in a couple of weeks like off you go they don't need to do one of their big preview events to tell us like what the redacted codex is going to be um and, and, and actually the preview events are less worth bothering with these days aren't they because now they've gone to that weird format where it's a pre-recorded thing I, I find them less good i find them less of an event uh, i find myself less likely to want to stay up for them your mileage may vary but are they gonna do some i mean don't forget that they the, the last preview we saw wasn't actually tied to a physical event so their previews don't have to be tied to physical events they can just do these things are we going to get like a summer preview in in July? Don't know. Don't know. Let me know what you think. No? That's been today's little kind of news roundup video. I I don't know. Uh, I want to say thank you to all my members, especially to uh, Nightfall uh, and Massive Crit, who are both subscribed at the highest possible tier, which is fantastic. Uh, and I will see you again with some sort of video on uh, Tuesday. All right, guys, have a great one. Hope you had a good Sunday. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all those things, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. 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 Goodbye.